Very good. Right, coach, you start off with a Just thought, uh, you know, defensive rebounding uh, defensively in the first half. Uh, we, you know, we, we were overly focused. We, we played as physical as we played all season long. Um, got off to a great start against a very talented team to lead for 36 minutes out of the game. And then, you, you know, you think about us from an offensive standpoint tonight. You know, to score 99 uh, points, we left, I don't know, whatever, 18 free throws or whatever it is at the, at the foul line. We left those points. We had five point blank missed layups. Um, I mean, we could, we, we could have scored tonight, you know, 112, 113 points um, just by making our foul shots and making our layups. So I thought offensively, by far the best we played. The guards were phenomenal, 86 points uh, by our backcourt. And, um, you know, we finished the season at home the way that we should. I think our home record's 14 and 4. Um, you know, and some of those we, you know, a second here or there, and the record being, you know, you know even different. Eric, I know that Georgia game was really tough, and a lot of people say, well, okay, there goes Arkansas's NCAA at large hopes, but then you win a big game tonight, and it's like, okay, now they're, they're back on the bubble. Kind of, how, how do you feel about that? And how, just how big a win was this tonight? I know you got work to do, but you really had to win tonight. Yeah, no, we, we knew we had to win tonight, Bob, for sure. And, and um, I thought we had great practices. I mean, we went back to training camp practices. We, we normally go through the opposing team sets over and over and over. We did a little bit yesterday and a little bit today, but we went back to all of our training camp drills. Um, talk, you know, we got went back to shell defense. We went back to pick and rolls at six different angles on the floor. We switched some. We tracked some. Um, this this tracking the, the ball screen has been very effective for us, um, and we did a good job executing it again. You know, the way that we're playing defensively right now is we are giving up a little bit more uh, higher percentage three-point shots, but we're certainly protecting the lane a lot better than we were early in the year. Just because you all did such a great job running the clock in the second half, how kind of frustrating and scary was it with the missed free throws that when they crept back in it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, you you play that clock game for sure in your head. And... Um, you know, played out the way we wanted. I mean, obviously, if you keep playing, uh, and we did let them play a little bit more than I wanted to, but we missed some layups. I mean, uh, we missed three layups, two in back-to-back -back possessions, and at that point, I said, all right, we're going to milk the clock and uh, either dribble drive or, or, or try to draw free throws attempted. And obviously, to take 54 foul shots is a, is a, is a, is a really unbelievable number. Um, but that's what happens too when you get a big lead and then it gets under that eight minute mark. You got to start thinking about fouling and being a little bit more aggressive, and that's what LSU had to do. Eric, you know, uh, Will Wade said obviously Mason had a great game, but he thought Jimmy really controlled the game with his scoring and rebounding assists. What did you think of Jimmy's? Jimmy's I thought game? Jimmy, I, I thought the biggest thing with Jimmy was his defensive rebounding. I mean, to come in a game against a, an awesome rebounding team with great length and great athleticism and to think he's going to have 14 defensive rebounds. I mean, I don't know if we had 14 defensive rebounds in the entire last game we played LSU. So I thought he was focused. That's what we talked about. We, we did a million box out drills. We had four guys blocking out eight people um, in a circle drill that we do from a defensive rebounding standpoint. And um, he took it to heart that we had to go rebound in traffic. And I mean, there was a couple of defensive rebounds where we actually fought to get the ball between ourselves. One of those balls in front of the bench was knocked out because we had three guys go for the ball and knock it out of each other's hands. But we'd certainly rather have that um, than, than, than what we saw in Baton Rouge. Kind of how, just how happy were you? Uh, you know, a guy rebounded. I think their second chance points fourteen and nine, a lot better than twenty six zero, and and they you only out, they only out re rebound you by five. Just how'd you feel about the the rebounding overall? How good that was? Yeah, I thought the rebounding was 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 phenomenal. I really did. I thought that they they were all focused on it. Ethan gave us um, a different look from a rebounding standpoint. I thought Reggie came in, and I thought Reggie's six straight minutes in the first half was, was really important as well. Um, he made a great pass. Um, he got physical. 
Um, so, I, you know, I thought everybody that checked in tonight, you know, contributed. He goes, Mason goes for 30 again, 30 plus again. And Jimmy came in here and said, wasn't really a surprise to him. Is that kind of where you're at with Mason too? Yeah, I mean, we, we put him in, uh, you know, he's, in, he's involved in everything we do offensively. Um, he's handling the ball in pick and rolls. He's handling the ball in flat situations when we go one, four flat and, and, um, and let him go one on one against certain matchups. He might set a screen uh, to get a slip or a, or, or a switch. And then he picks and pops and, and goes into an isolation situation. I thought our team tonight, probably better than any game we've played all year, we picked the, the mismatches that we wanted from an offensive standpoint. And then we went to that half-court trap um, and left certain people to, to take wide open shots and trapped certain people. And I thought that stretch when we, when we did that was, was uh, you know, kind of a game changer and a momentum changer when we, when we went to our trap. Important, you think, was Henderson in that first half, and and also the two threes that Sills hit to give you the lead. Yeah, I thought that um, Desi's first half spurt offensively opened up the floor for Mason a lot, um, and then obviously Ethan's minutes and his, you know, because Ethan's just kind of a different uh, athlete for us, and um, when he when he's goes in there and rebounds in traffic, we're a much better defensive team, and we're certainly a much better defensive rebounding team. And and Ethan's had two really good home games back to back. I thought he was phenomenal against Tennessee. I thought he was really good tonight. I did not think that was the case in Georgia. So now we all as a group have got to step up and and play much better than what we have on the road of late. Yeah, Eric, Jimmy said he, he was really, obviously, he was glad you guys won, but with the senior ceremony afterwards, he said, you know, if you guys lost, he wouldn't even want to go out there on the court. Um, how, how, He's not the only one. But. Yeah, but yeah how, how good was that, the, the way it worked out? And, and I don't know if you thought about this, but the last time LSU beat Arkansas on senior day, you, you were, you know, on the LSU bench when Hornsby hit that shot. I was so. reminded by that. I've yeah. gotten a few texts from yeah. Coach Jones earlier today. Yeah, so you're, 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 you're 2-0 and on, on senior days in, in Walton Arena. I don't, it's pretty good. We need more that. senior nights. What? We need more senior nights then. Uh, certainly, you know, Jimmy, the way that he played, because um, there's no doubt that this night to the student athlete, regardless of the sport you play, regardless of what campus you're on, like it's really important. Um, and it's some it's an emotional night. It's actually an emotional day for a lot of people because um, families are in town and and um, I mean I'm 54 years old and I can feel the emotion. You know, hugging Jimmy, uh, hugging Adria. I mean I'm I almost started crying and I've been through a lot of stuff. But that's how emotional though you know that feeling gets at that particular moment or or that particular day um, for those guys on senior night.